a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens Till her boyfriend kicked her on one of those crushing scenes What was she to do? Where was she to go? She had on her fanny At the time, you have no idea that you're playing an iconic role <laughs> So it's only after the nanny went off the air in 1999 And uh, people will come up to you and say something about, you know, how much they love the show and how much they love Niles and Cece's banter between them. And you suddenly think, gosh, we were, we were popular. We really didn't have a sense of it. It's one of those things that you can't imagine at the time that you're doing it, the effect that it's having on people. And, and it's so gratifying. The insults back and forth between us led to us in a huge kiss and embrace, which Maxwell and Fran walked in and they caught us. And I thought, let's not go much further with that idea. And I never expressed this to the writers because it's not our job to tell the writers what to write or how to write. So you just, you just do what they tell you to do. We knew it was the last season and the writers were starting to just tie up plot lines and plot, plot stories. I've almost never been satisfied with the way sitcoms or any, even dramatic shows end. Even when a show ends, the life of the characters goes on. Niles and Cece would just go on at each other forever. If they had done that to set up a spinoff, well, that would have been a great idea, but they weren't going to do that. And so they were just writing us an ending and it felt too pat. So that's why I didn't like it, but I played it because otherwise I couldn't have cashed the check. The most fun and the most nerve-wracking thing that I did on the show was my tribute to Tom Cruise in Risky Business. It was so much fun. Lee Shalit, who directed that episode, she and I watched the Tom Cruise sequence in that movie over and over again so we could get it as close to, you know, real uh, as, as he did. <laughs> They blocked off the set from the audience so that the live audience there didn't know what was coming. So when the music started and I slid on, the audience stood and cheered and carried on. We almost couldn't do the number because the audience just could, wouldn't stop reacting. Peter, one of the executive producers on the show, Peter Jacobson, he would do the warm up for the audience telling stories and singing songs and laughing and carrying on while we were changing clothes or changing sets or whatever. And somebody in the audience one day asked him which of the cast members had the hardest time remembering their lines. He said, well, everybody but Daniel. Daniel never forgets anything. He knows his lines and everybody else's. But we started the scene and my second line I couldn't remember. And so I just screamed out to the audience and to Peter, thanks a lot, Peter. <laughs> I'm actually going for flushing.